It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills, next on Madden Football. Winter is just around the corner as you get a look at Highmark Stadium just south of Buffalo, New York. Tonight we've got an AFC matchup on tap between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gordon on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? This will be fielded inside the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And the Buffalo offense ready to bring out their high-powered attack. And at the center of it all, of course, the rocket arm man in his fifth year out of Wyoming, Josh Allen. And in this league, there are many quarterbacks who have the most success running the ball, while there are others who have big arms. There aren't too many guys who can do both. At the end of many games, this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. To the air right away is Allen. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it's second down. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early. Something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Play action. Now it's Allen. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver. But they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. On play action, Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 46. Now the fourth year running back. This is Devin Singletary. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. That was good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Oh, 
from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. They run for the first time with James Cook. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. It's caught by Davis. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain. So they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all. Hard to check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Throwing on first down is Allen. A quick throw going to be caught by Diggs. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 14 yards that time for number 14. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Now Allen. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. to the air, Allen, and it's caught. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, Still waiting for the down. pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. The ball placed just outside of the end zone as they come up again on another third and goal. Allen going to throw. Touchdown, Bills! Khalil Shakir from a yard out. And the Bills put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. That was a big throw right there on third and goal. And the defense has to be prepared for you to throw the ball on third and goal. Because really, second down, second and goal, that's your play action time. And you're not sure whether they're going to run it or throw it. Third down, you're usually sure they're probably going to pass it. Even more impressive that they got it done and on the opening drive of the game. They always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that makes the score 7-0. Touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Now Tua Tungabailoa gets set to lead this Dolphins offense for the first time. And when you watch him play, everything just looks like it comes so naturally to him. When he's dialed in and finds that zone, passes are crisp, he sees the field really well, and he takes charge as the leader of this offense. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 29 yards, first down. I love that play, because in the snow you think run, run, run. Big passing play there. And defenders hate it, especially in open space, because trying to come under control, break down and make a tackle in the open field, difficult in normal conditions. In these conditions, almost impossible. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. Throwing now is Chugabailoa. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Forcing incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. To throw once more on second and 10. Two. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. And able to find Gesicki as tight end. Tua finding Gesicki there for a Dolphin first. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On play action, here's Tua. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he's going to get this down near the 25. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Again, it's Tug of Iloa. Got a man here, it's Wilson. Touchdown! Cedric Wilson, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from drawing level. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them 
played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And a little dangerous there. Almost a penalty, but it does get into the end zone before going over the sideline for a touchback. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. Well, the football changing hands here as this offense takes a field. Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. And look at this, they come right back with a big shot downfield. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, get that water break and get on out there and play. The extra point by Bass. Up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. to seven. Touchdown pass to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So Miami coming out for their second drive. After that last score we just saw, now 14 to 7. So a chance to march down the field here, try to tie this football game. Two and now on first down. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this one is incomplete. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Two are going to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 25 yards there on the catch and run. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap, to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. 
And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 27. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. That's good. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. You know I love football. You know I love the game. I hope so. But nighttime in December, you know I'm wearing multiple coats. <laughs> so I just wonder about the guys on the field with all the great gear that they have. Do they have enough on or do they have too much on? Because sometimes that can affect you trying to carry the ball. into the Bills now with a first and 10 at the 20. Following the fumble recovery, Allen. And his throw is incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Singletary trying the left side. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And so much of being a good tackler is understanding and taking the right angles to a ball carrier. And that was just tremendous straight line speed there. He eliminated the angles and was able to meet his man behind the line of scrimmage. And the next-gen stats, they tell the story as he was approaching 19 miles an hour on that one. The offense on third down tonight, a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third down and 12. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. And Cook has it, left side. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. On third down, you'll give him that. You just want to make sure that you play the first down line. They were able to get him down and force the punt. So now on fourth down, Sam Martin on to punt for Buffalo. Back deep is Tyreek Hill. Fielded just inside the 30. It'll be a 39-yard punt. Give him a good 10 yards on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. Right now, they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard, and that won't change if this drive ends like the last one when they had that lost fumble. So you have a feeling taking care of the football is certainly paramount right now. Yeah, and it's not just the guy who dropped it on the last drive, is it? That means everyone who might touch the ball is getting the same message. Guys, ball security, paramount. Let's take care of it, and if we do, we've got a chance to put points on the board. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. A little juke. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. We've hit the two minute mark in the second quarter, 14 to 7. Let's go. 
to and now on first down. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Looking to throw again on second down. Tua. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill. Complete. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, 33 yards. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. Sanders on for the extra point. And we've got a good one, Bruin. We're all knotted up at 14. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You've got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. To throw on second and ten. Allen, Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. To throw, it's Allen. Forced out to his left. And he goes out right around the 39. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm but he was more than happy to dissect them with his legs for that first down pickup. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's Allen. And that is caught, it's Davis. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. now on first down. 
And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. Give him a couple on the scramble in second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. To throw again on second down. Allen toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they're throwing it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throwing is Allen on third. Buying time to his left. Pass the 20. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Now a signal in the timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. On play action, Allen. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Miami. And they've had all sorts of success thus far tonight throwing the football as they're on pace to throw for 300-plus yards if things continue the way they've been going. Meanwhile, for the Bills, they weren't quite as successful throwing the ball as their counterparts were, but they still were able to move the ball reasonably well in that first half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. has changed since we left you at halftime. The snow still continuing to fall as we are back underway. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? And they work this well upfield across the 45. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. Well, Raheem Mostert, remember, he established himself as a special teams guy before becoming a good runner, and he's never been one to back away from contact as he's able to run through would-be tacklers there on his way downfield. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Now a short one to Gesicki, and he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. On second down, Mostert. And 
And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. And that's exactly what you're looking for at the inside linebacker spot. Versatility. He can drop into coverage, or as he did on that last play, use his speed to get to the perimeter and knock the ball carrier for a loss. Off of play action, tug of Iloa. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 13. Throwing to start the drive. Allen. This ball complete to the tight end, Sweeney. And he'll be just shy of the 20 at the 19 as he goes out of bounds. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. Now Allen. That'll be complete to Cook. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. On play action, Allen. They'll roll him out right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen works right side into the hands of the tight end, Knox. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Allen going to try and throw on third down. And this is intercepted. He was trying to get it to Davis. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And the Dolphins are going to take possession of the football. Well, it's a cold night. And whether you're a quarterback that wears a glove on his throwing hand or not, that ball is a rock, Brandon. You've got to really drive it through the cold and the wind, or it can take off on you. And that may have been what happened there. So now here come the Dolphins. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. After the turnover, it's Tua. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Well, that's always a good place to throw it, just because he's one of the biggest targets, not only on his team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. 
Now coaches want him to catch the football first. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Once again, it's Mostert. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. And that is incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. So fourth down, two and departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. The kick by Sanders is good. And the Dolphins have come back now to regain the lead. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Takes it at the seven. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. So the offense back out now, coming off its first interception of the game the last time out, trying to reestablish some, some momentum here, Charles. But they're trailing defensively. Maybe these guys smelling the blood in the water a little bit. Yeah, I think that they probably are. But what they need to do right now is just make sure they don't force the action too much themselves. They've got them on the run a little bit. You just want to be in a position where if they make another mistake, you're there to capitalize on it and take it away from them. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. To the air, Allen. And this is Cook with a grab. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a gain of 13 and a Buffalo first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. So the shotgun snap to Allen. Holding offense. They'll come up now on a 
second and long after the hold. Allen going to throw. Working the middle here. That's complete to Knox, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And that's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From midfield, here's Allen. And his throw here is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. The Bills on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and ten. Here's Allen. And that's incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. There's Sam Martin now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. Then the Dolphins getting set to go here. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game, and you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Brandon, there have been some memorable snow games for championships in the NFL. 1948. Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Cardinals. Well, the most famous one in my lifetime, I think, is got to be 01, right? Raiders, Patriots, just in the uh, Patriots to the Super to Bowl. The tuck roll. tuck roll, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one people remember. But I also know this in Miami, the infamous one, the snowplow game in New England when they went out there and, and the Patriots had a guy come out and clear a spot on the field for their field goal kicker to kick the game winner. Is that 82? That was 82, and the Dolphins fans will never forget it. Well, we're not seeing one of those famous games here, but it's fun to be in the snow nonetheless. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Here's Tua. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the gun, it's Tua. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. A 
Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a first down in field goal range already. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. to think likely another running play coming here second and 11. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert and whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 153 left. Play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. To throw is Tua. He is going to find Hill here. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And yeah, they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. take a knee here. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Up the middle they go with Moster. And he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Raheem Moster taking it in from four yards out. And the Dolphins get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play and actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. That time, a nine-play drive, and it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Moster. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. McKenzie will not return this and will be brought out to the 25. Allen and the Bills now down 24-14. A little over a minute to go. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. And that's complete to McKenzie. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. In this weather, any big play in the passing game, that's, that's just a bonus, right? It certainly is, but oftentimes offenses think in clement weather, 
plays to their advantage because you know where you're going on offense. Defenders have to react, and they often slip. That's taken in by Knox, and they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense in every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Now Allen. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. Well, this defense has been physical all game long, and it certainly looks like they're not going to back off and make things any easier. They want to keep making life miserable for the receivers all the way to the end. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's Allen. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. You give him big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked up by Xavier Howard. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.